Scientists in California say they were able to create the first nuclear fusion reaction that generated more energy than it took to produce. For decades, researchers have been trying to harness fusion, which is the nuclear reaction that powers the sun as a source of clean energy. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. And the second thing it does, of course, is that this milestone moves us one significant step closer to the possibility of zero carbon, abundant fusion energy powering our society. And for more on this story, we can cross to Christine Berzina. She is the managing director at the German Marshall Fund North, based in Washington, D.C. Uh, thanks so much for being with us here on France 24. Uh, first of all, how significant of a scientific achievement do you think this is? This is an incredibly significant scientific achievement because scientists have been attempting to get this to make the output uh, be more than the input into this reaction since the 1950s, over 60 years, they say in this laboratory, the efforts have been trying to achieve this very thing. So, you know, spans more than any individual's career and is a tremendous achievement in the science itself. Well, it may take decades to harness nuclear fusion in a widespread way. So how does that line up or, or not with these goals we have to fight climate change? Well, it, it, this is not going to be a solution for the energy prices this winter. It's not going to be a question about what you do by 2030. But when you look at this century, uh, this could be a very significant technology. And what we've had until this point were various models for how do you create this ignition reaction uh, that we saw the now being celebrated. Um, you had this California model. There's a different one uh, that is being uh, worked on a number of countries in, in France. So you have the EU and Russia and China, uh, the US, others working on an, a separate hypothesis for how you could get to the same point in France. And so the question here is, how does the science move forward? What are the models that might be viable in the future for commercialization, for taking something outside of a laboratory setting and moving it into something that could be important for power generation in our homes across the planet? Well, so how do you foresee that playing out, given that there is competition and there is technology being um, uncovered in various in various countries? Well, the competition for science is a good thing. The competition uh, really can make all of the projects move forward more quickly because this creates, um, much as in the space race days, uh, you have a push to try to have the next discovery. There is a bit of national clout, uh, a bit of ego involved, of course, but the entire sphere moves forward as well. You have government-sponsored projects, and there also are private sector projects that are seeking to do similar things. Now, the sense also in terms of, acquire, of, of attracting investment, which is very important for the commercialization, this could also be a game-changing feat. Because if something for 60 plus years has just been a desire, a hope that one day this will work out, that's not exactly a very attractive proposition for a private sector investment. Investor. Governments have pride on the line, so they're throwing money into it. But now something has worked. And how do you do, how do you map the change in technology, having an actual achievement, and how does that fit into the commercial private investment space? That could be really some of the fueling that we need to create this entirely carbon neutral future. Uh, and that could be tremendously exciting for all of us. You're talking about competition, but there also must be some sort of agreement. What, what would it take for this kind of, uh, to make this source of power a reality? What kind of agreement would there have to be globally for that to happen? Well, I think it first has to be taken to a stage where it's making sense technologically and financially that you're putting not only in the reaction, but the entire system. So you have lasers that are taking all of their energy, beaming it onto one particular nugget in this case, um, that then gets so hot it creates more energy that was put into it, but not into the whole system. So again, before we see what do you do with it, there has to be an entire system in place to create a uh, an energy, a power station that can be usable 
for various countries. But because this is such a global good, if there is fusion technology, the reason that there are such scientific projects that we see, like the one in France, um, ITER, it's very important to just understand that the 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 exchange of information, the potential global good is so high that once there are real viable technologies, the potential to share them and to provide something that is good for everybody, I think is very high. Always challenges there, but I think scientific collaboration on this is always uh, helpful also within our international system, providing support for making this work for everybody in the decades to come would be great. But again, this is a first step. It's not a viable commercial or technological model for our energy purposes yet, but it is a huge leap forward from where we were. Well, it's certainly giving people some sense of hope, and it's nice to report on, on something positive when it comes to the environment every now and then. Okay. Uh, Christine Berzina, Managing Director of the German Marshall Fund North, based in Washington, D.C. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here on France 24. Thank you.